Hello everybody, Seville here, and today we're going to be going over the Daily Bugle Room from TryHackMe, where we compromise a Joomla CMS account via Python, practice cracking some hashes, and escalate our privileges by taking advantage of Yum. And I will go ahead and preface with the fact that I have recorded this video probably 102 times, this being the 103rd, and I'm hoping that this is in fact the last time I have to record it, because I have had issue after issue of trying to make sure that the recording software is recording and then uh, I don't lose connection via um, internet or what have you. It's raining, so we're having all types of issues today. However, I'm going to get this video to you and it's going to be perfect and that is what I must do. So, without wasting any more time that I have with you here today, which I appreciate by the way, I will go ahead and hop right into it. As you can see, I have deployed the machine and I let it sit for a minute so it could bake up and get configured. We have uh, truly only two tasks to go through. As you can see, that third task is just the credits, requires no answer, and has no relevance to the completion of the box. So we'll hop in with uh, task number one. So the question to task number one is who robbed the bank? So let's go ahead and get to that web server of 1010.38.101. It should, co should come right up for us, I hope, because uh, I have let it sit and bake for a minute, so it should be configured and ready to go. I can see that's taken just a second here, so uh, fingers crossed that we do get that uh, connection to go through there. And I don't have a bad internet, by the way. It's pretty good. I get like 100 megs or something like that. I don't know. That's pretty good for some, uh, really bad for others. In my area, that's really good. So anyways, it does come up. We see that Spider-Man does, in fact, uh, rob the bank. Well, we don't see that he does do that, but according to Daily Bugle, Spider-Man robbed the bank. Whether that's the real him or not, it was Spider-Man. Everybody knows uh, how uh, J. Jameson feels, and that is, in fact, our first answer for question number one of task one, which is who robbed the bank, and that is, in fact, Spider-Man. So we can move on to task number two, which is what is the Joomla, or, or task number two is to obtain user and root uh, by hacking into the machine, and it asks for the uh, Joomla version of which we are trying to exploit. So in order to find that, you can do a few things here. So we can view the page source, and try to like search Joomla as you saw in my uh, in, the, in the find tab there but you're not going to find much information at least for the two matches that we have it doesn't have any version information and if you get uh, you know a little skeptical of even finding it at all on the uh, home page well you probably won't you're going to need to find that login page for Joomla and the best way to do that is to start brute forcing some web directories so let's go ahead and head, and head over to Good old GoBuster. So we'll go ahead and jump into Tmux first and then change directories to GoBuster. And we'll go ahead and run it with the dir flag there. And then we want to supply the URL and a word list with dash W. And we're going to use my go to directory, which is the dirbuster directory list 2.3 small.txt. directory list 2.3 I hope I said that the first time and we'll bump up the threads to 50 and that should find what we need we'll give that just a moment to go ahead and um, aggregate all those directories so that we can see it shouldn't take too long for us Okay, and as you can see, it did come up for us. We see the administrator directory has been found, and we can cancel that and go ahead and copy the web directory there and go ahead and paste it in our search bar and see that we find the Joomla login screen. You can also go to the page source here, and you could attempt to find maybe version. As you can see, there's nothing there. Um, if you scroll through and try to just find some version information, you won't... Uh, find anything too fruitful for our answer here. So the next best thing is to probably search how to find the Joomla version. So we can, um, let's see, the best way to craft that question, uh, that, that question for Google would be something like scan Joomla version. And you'll come across a few penetration testing tools um, and looks like a, a repository and a few other things. I just went to this one and found Joomscan. So we can download Joomscan and at that point, it would be able to uh, give us the version number that Joom, Joomla is running. So let's go ahead and go to that. I already have it downloaded, so we don't have to go through that. 
let's see if, uh, if, if I can remember this right. It is joomscan, and now we can simply just run the joomscan-pl. Or does it, does it just run like that? Okay, perfect, it just runs just like that. And now we just need to supply the URL, as you can see in the usage model right here. It just It's just joomscan-u and then our targets. And our target is going to be 101. And that detects the Joomla version to be 3.7.0. We know that to be correct. As you can see, the answer is in fact correct. And now we just need to um, crack the password. And it says, instead of using SQL map, why not use a Python script? So we know the version number of Joomla, so this shouldn't be too hard to uh, get the answer there for us. All we need to do is do Joomla 3.7.0 Python exploit. And we'll find a repository right at the top for us that shows a Python exploit for us. You can click that and just if you want if you want to go through it, if you're a Python person and well, I mean, I think if you're, you know, if you're doing this at this level, you probably could read that pretty easily. However, if you needed some more information, there is another um, repo that has some uh, PO, uh, like a, I wouldn't say a POC, but it just kind of shows you the uh, usage case for it. And then if you went through this route, you get a little bit more from the, uh, from the repo, some more exploits that seem pretty cool. And I actually went this route and just took everything that was here and maybe I'll use it in another video. I don't know, but for this case, we need to use the Joomla um, exploit here, this Python exploit, which should dump the user hash for us to exploit and get the password. So let's go ahead and do that now. We can go ahead and clear this. We don't need that anymore. And we'll CD into exploits and then tickets. I think it's in this directory and it is. So we can go ahead and run Python Joomla.py and then it just needs, I'm pretty sure, the URL address. So 1010.38.101. As you can see, it's now fetching the hash to dump for us. And it finds it successfully. As you can see, it found the user Jonah. It, uh, Jonah is, in fact, a super user. And this is the hash here. So we'll go ahead and copy that. If you're unfamiliar with, um, you know, hashes or, if you, you know, you don't, you see a hash that you're just, you just don't know of, the best way to, you know, determine what hash that is, if uh, you just want to do it manually, is go to Hashcat, go to the website here, and then you go to their wiki tab. And if you go to example hashes, you can, you know, uh, compare the hash that you found with all the examples they have here, and you can, you know, identify uh, what the hash is. I know for a fact that this is bcrypt. Secondly, I've already um, cracked this hash, so I would hope that I already knew. And as you can see, bcrypt is right here with the hash ID of 3200. So with Hashcat, we can make this pretty easy for us. We are just going to make sure I copy that. And we're going to head back to our daily bugle directory. So let's head back there. And we want to dhm and then daily bugle. And we can go ahead and start this hash file. And that's not how we want to do that. Let's try that one more time. Don't do not do that to me. There we go. Okay. Little issue there, but no problem. Now we can use Hashcat. We can um, specify the attack mode as just zero. And then dash M to define what, ver uh, what the ID of the hash is. And that was 3200. And then the file that contains the hash that we want to crack and then we just need to supply a dictionary to use against that file which was just going to be rock you so that's pretty easy and we need to force it at least for my vm here and as you can see it's already found the hash so all we need to do now is just add the show and it says that our password is spider-man 123 and we can confirm that by seeing that the crack password is in fact spider-man 123 so now we have a full set of credentials which is uh, jonah for our username and Spider-Man 123 for our password. So that was, you know, that's a little unsettling that Jonah uses Spider-Man 123 as his password. And let's go ahead and get a creds.txt file going because now we have some um, valid credentials. And we wanna keep those just in case we need them in the future. So let's go ahead and save that out. And now we have some good credentials. So let's go over to that Joomla login and we'll do Jonah and then Spider-Man123. Hope I typed that right, and I did. 
And so now we're met with the on the uh, Joomla control panel. So now we need to get a reverse shell because the next question is the uh, is to get the user flag. Well, you're not going to get the user flag from here. I mean, you could look around and attempt to find that. I don't know. I highly doubt you'll find it here. Nonetheless, if you did something like uh, Joomla reverse shell, you'll find a video. Uh, here's a hacking article that has some information on how to get that, that reverse shell going. And um, luckily, we don't have to go through all that right now. I can just show you how to do it. But this is actually a pretty good write up here on how you would need to go about getting that uh, reverse shell in order to move forward. And that is going to need a few things here. So we're going to need to go to templates. And then we are met with this bees three details and files. Once we click that, we find a index.php. And all we need to do is actually edit this.php file, this index.php file to um, and input a PHP reverse shell. And we can get one from uh, Pintest, Pintest Monkey that has a really good one, probably, probably just about everybody's go-to. Unless you're just super elite and you make your own, then I apologize. Not everyone, everyone but you, sir, I apologize. Thank you for even watching this video. And uh, we can go to cheat sheets, reverse shell cheat sheet. And then you can go to PHP, and then I just use the one that you download from here. I already have it, so I'm just going to go ahead and copy it real quick. Let's see. It should be in its folder, and it is. So let's go ahead and copy this. And all we need to do is paste it right in here. We do, we do need to make a few modifications. We need to change the IP address and the port number because I don't want to connect on port 1234. I'd like 9001. So let's change this IP address. I do know that mine is 10813197, and the port I want to connect is going to be 9001. So now that that is done, we can go ahead and save. And before we go uh, any further, I need to go ahead and get a Netcat listener going. So let's go ahead and we can clear this and exit, and let's clear that and get a Netcat going. So we need to set that to 9001 because that is the port that we're going to be listening on. And now, as far as our next step, is to launch this uh, reverse shell so that we can, in fact, get our shell. So let's go ahead and copy this because I'm going to do it on a, another tab here. So let's copy that. And I'm pretty sure we need to go this route, which is templates, and then bees3, and then index.php. Once you go that uh, through this directory, which is kind of where we came from, we went through templates. We uh, Is it going to let us... Probably not. So once you go through extensions and templates, you go to bees3. So we need to just follow that same path. Once we follow that path, we just launch index.php, which, ha which houses our uh, reverse shell. And then our netcat listener should give back the, uh, the shell here for uh, WW data. Or uh, I'm sorry, Apache. So now we have shell access. However, we don't have um, much, much for anything for permissions because if we go to like CD home, and then we list what's in there. We get uh, Jay Jamison as a user in there. If we try to go into his user folder, we are given a permission denied. So we need to find our way around that or at least find credentials to get in as Jay Jamison. So uh, if you search around the box, you'll eventually come around to var www HTML directory. And if we list the contents in that, we will find a configuration.php. Once you cut that out, you will find that it just has a list of uh, configuration files or configuration stuff. I don't really know what to call it. Actually, I apologize. But you'll eventually come across a user root and then the password of some random words and numbers. Um, the first thing I did was actually, I actually thought I found the root user's uh, username and password. So I thought I was just gonna get a uh, one-way ticket straight to root, but that was not the case. If you try to uh, go ahead and Save this as a, uh, I don't know, creds1.txt or ho however you use your namespaces for uh, credential files, you'll find out that that is not the case. It does give you some information that it's a, a MySQLi a database. So this is uh, for the, I, I'm assuming, their back end uh, of everything. Nonetheless, this is a valid password, but for something that is not root. So we'll go ahead and copy that. And we'll quit and clear. Oh, we can't clear that. So we'll actually exit because we're actually done here. We don't need this anymore. We will clear this out. 
and we still have that password there for us. Well, we know that we have a user in the home folder as Jay Jameson. And um, I don't think we actually didn't run in map, so let's actually run in map real quick if we can. S C S V O N and we will save it as open ports.txt and then the IP address is 1010.38.101. See if that goes through for us real quick. As a matter of fact, speaking of such, I could probably do it a little bit quicker if I just did a pretty basic one. Shame on me for actually not doing it earlier because that was actually the first thing I did when I got on this box was do an in map scan and uh, it's kind of it's kind of a necessity in order to get through uh, this this next portion here. And as you can see, the uh, basic in map scan with you know no extra flags shows us that there are three ports open. We have a uh, MySQL database, we have SSH, and we have of course the web server that we found that Spider Man is in fact robbing the bank. Nonetheless, the most notable thing here is the SSH is open, and we have Jay Jameson, and we have a um, we'll call it a rogue password right now. We know it doesn't work for root. We can do SSH root at 10.10.38.101. And it, we're sure we want to connect. And we can try that password. And we see that it does not work whatsoever. So we'll cancel that. Clear. And then we'll try that one more time. But this time, instead of root, we'll use J. Jameson. And we'll supply that password that we used earlier with the weird uh, numbers and letters there. And we see that we now have uh, access as J. Jameson through SSH. So if you print our working directory, we see that we are in the home folder. We can list all the contents there and find a user.txt. So let's cat that out. And we can go ahead and copy. Well, before we copy that, let's go ahead and head over to, a, uh, to our Daily Bugle directory and actually save those credentials because we may need them if we get kicked out for some odd reason or what have you. So let's go ahead and create creds uh, 2txt and it's going to be J. Jameson with that crazy wonky password and now we can save that and now we have another set of uh, credentials here for SSH. Perfect. Now we can head back to our uh, SSH shell here and we can move on and go forward. So we can copy this user.txt flag and see if that is in fact correct which should be and we see that it is. Now we need to find the root flag here which is pretty straightforward. Um, it took me a great deal of time before I found out what I needed to do and I was so upset with myself because I figured it was going to be something totally different than what I'm used to um, and I should have followed my, uh, my methodology by just doing a simple um, Linux, uh, basic Linux privilege escalation and it hurt my heart when I did this and found out that I had um, access uh, pseudo, pseudo privileges as uh, with no password to run yum. However, I didn't actually know what I needed to do with that in order to, uh, to escalate my privileges until I searched yum privilege escalation. Once you do that, you'll find uh, GTFO bins has a little article on that. Thank you to them. And it runs a, it kind of gives you a, a idea of what's going on. It runs a privileged contacts and may be used to access the file system, escalate or maintain access with uh, elevated privileges if enabled on sudo. Um, the B portion of this will actually be the go to here. So it spawns an interactive root shell by loading a custom plugin. So basically, we just need to create these files here. And then uh, once we run sudo l again, we'll see that we now have the ability to sudo everything without a password and then we can get our root shell. So let's go ahead and get that done real quick. And just as a little commentary on that, I, I'm actually a little upset I can't really explain everything that's going on here. Um, I tried to, you know, find some information on it. Um, I might have to actually go through and maybe go through a write-up and see if maybe one of the people who submitted a write-up has some information, some background information on that. I can maybe explain it a little bit better and um, help out. I could probably link it in the description below. And
and maybe they have an idea of what's really going on here. Obviously, the people behind GTFO bins are uh, way beyond that of my skill set right now, and I respect them uh, undoubtedly, and they are awesome, but I cannot um, confidently explain to you everything that is being portrayed here, but I do know that it works, if that makes it any more better. And as you can see, after running all that, um, and then running sudo-l again, we see that we have the permissions to run anything as root, and we can simply just sudo su, and we are now root. And with that, we can go ahead and cat the root.txt file. And we see that that is a success. We can copy that, head over to our tryhagme answers, and submit it into our root flag question, and see that that is correct, and we have completed the room successfully. And 100%, actually, especially uh, since the final task is just some credits, and we can just uh, make that complete. Uh, that is it. Again, I am sorry I can't explain the uh, GTFO bins uh, confidently enough to, you know, really tell you what's really going on. I will try my best to figure that out, and I might add something to the end of, the end of this video. Nonetheless, I will also go through the write-ups and see if maybe someone else explains it, and, um, I don't know, give you a little bit more detail on that. Uh, however, I really appreciate you watching this video. I hope you learned a little bit of something, and I hope this helped you maybe if you got a little stuck on this box. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to comment below, and I'll be happy to answer them. Y'all have a great rest of the day, and I will see you on the next video. Bye-bye.